Okay, so the last part of chapter five, which is on polar coordinates, is on tangents and normals. Um, so when we talk about tangents and normals for polar curves, we actually can't find tangents at um, angles, kind of things like this. We can only do tangents and normals when they are either parallel to the initial line or perpendicular to the initial line. Um, if you want to do these tangents that are kind of on a non um, non-perpendicular or parallel to the initial line, it's a bit more complicated and it goes beyond the specification. So let's just look back here. I said, remember how you find the gradient, you found the gradient given some equations in parametric form. So for example, if you had x was cos theta and y was sine theta, to find dy dx, we do dy d theta divided by dx d theta, which comes up with this minus cot theta that we get here. Now we know that in the polar world, x is r cos theta and y is r sine theta. So I'm just going to investigate this bit that we've got at the top here, the fact that dy by dx is dy d theta over dx d theta. If we wanted something to be parallel to the initial line, then dy by d theta would be equal to zero. Because if you think about something being parallel to the initial line, then dy by dx is equal to zero. And the only way that dy by dx, which is dy d theta over dx d theta, the only way that this thing can be equal to zero is if the numerator is equal to zero. If we wanted it to be perpendicular to the initial line, then dx by d theta needs to be equal to zero. And that's because if something has a gradient like this, we would say that dy by dx is undefined for this kind of vertical line. Now, if dy by dx is undefined and dy by dx is dy by d theta over dx by d theta, we would make this undefined if you have the denominator being equal to zero. Because remember, if you divide by zero, you get something that is undefined. So that is why if it is parallel, dy d theta is zero. And if it is perpendicular to the initial line, dx d theta is equal to zero. So that's why it comes from this fraction I've got over here. Numerator zero for it being flat, denominator being equal zero for it being vertical. OK, so we're going to try this now with a couple of questions. We're not going to actually find the equations of the tangents and normals straight away. We're actually just going to find some things with coordinates because that's a little bit easier. So this first question says, find the coordinates of the points on R equals A 1 plus cos theta, where the tangents are parallel to the initial line theta equals 0. So the initial line is like this theta equals zero is that line, and we want them to be parallel to that. So because it's going to be parallel, that means we want it to be flat. In other words, we want the numerator dy by d theta to be equal to zero. So what I've said here is since we're about to find dy by d theta, start with y equals r sine theta and make sure that your expression is in terms of theta only. So I can't differentiate this thing straight away. What I want to differentiate is y. Now y is equal to r sine theta. So I know what r is. I can substitute this in. That means it is going to be a 1 plus cos theta. That's the r part. And I'm going to multiply it by sine theta. So now I've got an expression of y in terms of theta. Now I've got it looking like this, I can find out what dy by d theta is by doing some differentiation. Now I'm going to do the product rule here. You can either do the product rule writing down u and v, or you can do it straight away in your head. I'm going to be a bit lazy and I'm going to write it down just to make it crystal clear what's going on. So my u is a brackets 1 plus cos theta. Well, this is just going to be, um, goodness, what am I doing with this? In fact, I probably, I prefer, I think, to expand that. So I would have a sine theta plus a sine theta cos theta. I actually think that's probably the way I would go about differentiating this. Um, you don't have to do it that way. You could do the product rule that I was just talking about. So if I'm going to differentiate the a sine theta part, I would just have a cos theta. And now this next part is going to need the product rule. So u is a sine theta and v is cos theta. Again, you could just do this in your head. So u dash is going to be a cos theta and v dash is going to be minus sine theta. So when I do these here, I'm going to have minus a sine squared theta plus a cos squared theta. Let's see if I can just move that along a bit so it's not in my way. 
And we need to make dy by d theta equal to zero to make it um, to make it parallel to the initial line. So I'm going to solve this equation that I've got, which is a cos theta minus a sine squared theta plus a cos squared theta equals zero. Well, I can get rid of all of the a's that I've got here, and now there are tons of different ways that you could go about solving this. So I've got cos theta plus cos squared theta minus sine squared theta is equal to zero. Well, I'm probably just going to change this sine squared theta into a one minus cos squared theta. I think that's going to give me then a quadratic. So I have cos theta plus cos squared theta minus one minus cos squared theta is equal to zero. Let's keep going with this equation. So we have two cos squared theta plus cos theta minus one equals zero. So this is just a quadratic in cos theta. So I'm gonna to go to my graphics calculator that I've got with me and it's a polynomial with a coefficients of two, one and minus one. So I either get that cos theta is equal to a half or cos theta is equal to minus one. Um, so let's figure out what our solutions are going to be. Either theta is going to be the inverse cos of a half, which we know is pi over three, but remember, we're still solving a trig equation here, so we need to do 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. Or the inverse cos of minus 1, well, the inverse cos of minus 1 is pi. So we've now got the values of theta, but because we want the coordinates of where it is, um, ta where the tangents are parallel to the initial line, we also need to find out what r is equal to. So r is equal to a brackets 1 plus cos theta. Well, we know for these two angles that cos theta is equal to a half. So r is just going to be equal to a 1 plus a half, which is 3 over 2a. And for this one over here, we have a brackets 1 plus cos theta, and we know that cos theta is minus 1. So we just get that r is equal to 0. So this tells me that the coordinates what did it phrase in the question? The coordinates where the tangents are parallel are r theta, r theta, and r theta. So I'm going to show you this on Desmos. I'm going to plot the graph r equals a brackets 1 plus cos theta. So let's type this in. r equals a brackets 1 plus cos theta. Okay. I'll add a slider for A, and I'm just going to switch around to the polar mode. You can use this app as well. This app is completely free. And so the places that we think where it's going to be, um, we've said that one of the places is 3 over 2 A and pi over 3. Well, here is pi over 3, and you can see at that top point, it's actually completely flat there. I wonder if I can actually just type in a coordinate. Let's see if I can just type in. We said that R is 3 over 2 or 1.5 and that the other coordinate was pi over three, pi over three. I don't think it's gonna work on this version for some reason. Oh yeah, because of, that's not the coordinates, is it? It would be r, I'm not gonna type the coordinates in because it's gonna be kind of annoying. Um, but you can see at this point, pi over three, it would be completely flat. At minus five pi over three down at the bottom, it would be completely flat. And also at the origin, it would be completely flat as well if we were to draw those tangents on. So I'm just gonna quickly go back to what this looks like so I can draw a sketch. So it's this kind of like shape like this, terribly drawn. And the places that we've talked about the tangents would be these three ones here. This coordinate, the length of the line is three over two a and the angle is pi over three. This one down here, the length of the line is also 3 over 2a, and it's either minus pi over 3, or you can think all the way around of 5 pi over 3. And then this line here is just the line theta equals 0. Okay? 
Sorry for that Desmos demonstration. It wasn't quite as clear as I wanted it to be, but hopefully my sketch has helped. So we're going to try this one now. It says that a curve C has this polar equation and take note of the range of values of theta that it's asking for. And it says at the point P on C, the tangent to C is parallel to the initial line. So as soon as you see that it is parallel to the initial line, we know that dy by d theta is going to be zero, not dx by d theta. Given that O is the pole, find the exact length of the line OP. So you're going to have the pole, you're going to have a point P. We want to find the length of that line there. So think to yourself, what is the length of the line OP going to be? Well, it's just going to be the value of R. So that's what we're really trying to find for this. OK, well, we're going to look for what Y is. Now, we know usually that R is equal to, sorry, Y is equal to R sine theta. So y is going to be equal to r, which is 1 plus 2 cos theta, multiplied by sine theta. So when I expand the brackets, I have sine theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta, like this. If you want to, you could combine this, so you get sine theta plus sine 2 theta. But in a second, we're going to have to undo that double angle, so I'm not necessarily sure that it's a good thing, but we'll have a go. So I'm going to do dy by d theta. Sine theta is going to go to cos theta, and sine 2 theta is going to go to uh, plus 2 cos 2 theta. Now we want this to be equal to 0, so we get cos theta plus 2 cos 2 theta. Now like I just said, we're now going to have to undo this double angle that we've got here. So I think the best way of undoing this double angle is going to be replacing 2 cos 2 theta with two lots of cos 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So maybe it would have been better to differentiate this, but either way, we're going to have to, we've had this, um, you'd have had to do the product rule up there instead. So I get cos theta plus 4 cos squared theta minus 2. So this is just a quadratic with coefficients 4, 1, and minus 2. I'm going to go to my equation solver, so that's 4, 1, and minus 2. And I get some pretty nasty answers. I either get that cos theta is equal to minus 1 plus root 33 over 8, or that cos theta is equal to minus 1 minus root 33 over 8. But remember, we need theta to be between 0 and pi over 2, including pi over 2. Now, if I just give you these as decimals, as a decimal, this first one is 0 0.593, and this one is minus 8.43. So one of these ones is not going to be inside the range. And if you think about what a cosine graph looks like, it looks like this. This is pi over 2. So clearly, cosine of theta needs to be positive which means this one is going to be outside the range. So cos theta is equal to minus 1 plus root 33 over 8. Now, if we wanted to, we could find out what theta is equal to, but it's not actually required for this question, because all we want to do is to find out the length of the line OP. Now, the length of the line OP is literally just the value of R, for um, that particular point. So for the point P, we know that cos theta is minus 1 plus root 33 over 8. And if we want to find out what R is, well, we can just use the equation. R is equal to 1 plus 2 cos theta. So R is going to be equal to, if I just grab my calculator, I'm going to type in minus 1 plus root 33 divided by 8, I'm going to times it by 2, and I'm going to add 1, and I get that r is equal to 3 plus root 33 over 4. So that is the exact length of that line OP. Um, so we're not going to actually draw this one on Desmos, I'm just going to kind of leave us with just that information. It's not going to be that good to see this one on Desmos. The starting point is always to create the x or the y value that you need from the question. In this case, we needed what dy d theta was, so we created what y was. They never give you what y is in the question. They give you what r is, so you're going to need to do this extra step of multiplying it by sine theta. Then the question just becomes differentiation, solving a trig equation, and then doing a little bit of problem solving with that last bit.
So I'm going to do one more example in just a second on a separate video, which is less to do with finding the coordinates and the lengths of these lines, and more to actually more to do with actually finding the equations of the tangents and the normals. And it's just a little bit more involved, which is why I'm going to split it as a separate video.